One of the delightfully frustrating things about theoretical physics is that the farther we progress, the more abstract and hazy everything seems to become. From quantum entanglement and superposition to relativity and time dilation, most of us have accepted by now that the fundamental nature of reality is quite bizarre. It seems our intuitions are ill-equipped to understand it. We didn't evolve to perceive things on the quantum or the cosmic level. We didn't even evolve to perceive things as they are. We evolved to perceive them as they are useful for survival. It just so happens, though, we also evolved to reason. And underpinning that process of reasoning is our understanding of the laws of logic and of math. The universe presents us with a host of information. By modeling that information mathematically, we come step by step closer to understanding something of the universe's fundamental nature. What happens, though, when we can't access that information? This is one of the issues which most plagues physicists as they try to determine the conditions that might have preceded the Big Bang. Sir Roger Penrose, a Nobel Prize winning physicist and mathematician, has proposed that fluctuations in radiation from the Big Bang might actually encode clues to a previous universe from which ours has sprung. How could this be? Can we possibly see beyond the singularity and learn something of what came before? Everyone's heard of the Big Bang, of course. It was the beginning of the universe, the birth of space and time and matter. The universe was infinitely dense, all its energy and information contained within a single point. Then boom, it expanded outward. Over hundreds of thousands of years, the matter cooled. Electrons were freed to pair with protons, forming the first hydrogen atoms, the most basic of the elements. From there, things continued combining, attaining greater and greater complexity, forming gases and clouds, and eventually stars, planets, enzymes, all the building blocks of life, which led eventually to us. With the proper telescopes, we've actually been able to see evidence of the Big Bang, born on light waves called Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB. But what happened before all this, before the Big Bang? We've been studying things like elements and atoms and molecules and time for many years. It's nice to be able to ground our models in something we've confirmed. But that's where our models fall apart. You see, in order to allow for the Big Bang, we've accepted the idea of a singularity, that this point of supposedly infinite smallness, which supposedly contained all the energy and information of our universe. Our math leads inevitably to the singularity at the beginning of it all. Yet the math can't explain the singularity itself. You might think of the singularity like a foundation for a temple, or a factory for assembling a Tesla. Our mathematical models are like a manual, instructing a laborer in how to assemble the vehicle. The manual might describe the components of the factory, and it might describe how to use them to create a Tesla. But it doesn't describe how the factory itself was brought about. The problem is, once again, information. This CMB, traveling to us from the beginning of time, proves that the Big Bang happened, but it does this by proving that time ends, space ends. And because space-time ends at the Big Bang, we can't see beyond it. We can't access the information that might tell us what gave rise to that singularity in the first place. At least we thought we couldn't, until Sir Roger Penrose observed something in CMB which had previously eluded us. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for it in 2020, but it began way back in 1965, when he proved that black hole singularities are utterly unavoidable according to Einstein's theory. This means any distribution of matter, regardless of how messy or unevenly distributed, will ultimately collapse into a singularity as long as it is compacted into a small enough space at least within the bounds of space-time. In studying the CMB, Sir Penrose was curious to find that its patterns correlate strangely with those we expect to see at the end of our own universe, which has been extensively modeled by physicists. The universe started at a point of infinite density and has been expanding and cooling ever since. Dark energy is pushing galaxies apart faster than gravity is pulling them together which means the interactive energy systems of the universe are becoming more and more isolated, more fractured as the universe progresses. 
Inevitably, this will lead to what is known as the heat death of the universe. This is an extremely low energy state in which energy is so evenly distributed in the form of heat that there is no longer cause for it to interact or form more mechanical, complex systems. Some few supermassive black holes will continue to grow slowly, swallowing everything as they expand. The result is an expansive rare field state in which nothing can interact. Matter and radiation are extremely evenly distributed, just as they were at the Big Bang. Of course, now they are extremely far apart. The universe has been expanding all this time, after all. But, Penrose points out, with no possibility of interaction, it doesn't matter how far apart they are. They no longer experience space-time. They might as well be a singularity. In fact, relatively speaking, they are a singularity. So just as matter and energy were perfectly homogeneous at the beginning, so too will they be perfectly homogeneous at the end. And just as space-time fell apart in the infinitely small space of the Big Bang, so too will it fall apart in the infinitely big space at the end. That represents light converging in on that point and then coming out again. This is interesting in and of itself, of course. In studying the CMB further, though, Penrose noted that there are distinctive rings, or variations in the light, which are not explained by information present in our universe. As we've already mentioned, if there was variation in energy distribution at the beginning, it would be amplified many billions of times by now. But these rings don't correlate with such amplification. They seem to be caused by something else, something which pre-existed the singularity, but which is somehow transmitted through it. This is a strange thought. The entire point of a singularity is that you can't see beyond its event horizon, right? Time and space are supposed to break down. Information is supposed to become inaccessible. Well, Sir Penrose has shown that it's mathematically possible to preserve all information without relying on the full four dimensions of space-time. He does this by means of what are known as Penrose diagrams. 2D diagrams which preserve the angular relationship between the components in a system, without necessarily preserving the links. Again, remember, length or scale is of no particular importance when time is not experienced. The entirety of necessary information can then be captured by merely describing the structures of the universe relative to one another. After what is called the conformal rescaling, this information could be embedded in the singularity which births the next universe. Our Big Bang, theoretically, contains such a previous universe, which had reached a state of extreme expansion and uniformity, even as ours will reach in some many trillions of years. The decay which occurred as the last universe died is visible as the minute fluctuations in the CMB that we see now. Some have even begun to propose that when our universe does die, a sufficiently advanced humanity might encode our civilization onto such a Penrose diagram in two dimensions, and thus transmit it to the birth of the next universe.